Welcome back to our Pacific Business Brokers video blog. Today we are talking about assets and their value. Firstly, I will make the assumption that you know that there are tangible and intangible assets within a business. Secondly, the value of those assets will be subject to what those assets are used for, how much of a market there is for such assets, and how much money they generate. When we talk about the hard assets of a business, often people think that because they've purchased a specific asset for, say, $10,000, that they will automatically get that back when selling the business. That may be so, but it may not be. The reason being that when it comes to business value, specifically when we're talking about a business as a going concern, the value of those assets is most often determined by how much they can generate in earnings. In situations where the assets are not generating earnings, then one must assess what the fair market value of those assets might be, and that would depend on whether there's even a market for them. The value of those assets, if not generating earnings, would also then need to be considered if that value should be in place and in use, or if liquidation value, and if liquidation value were the orderly or forced liquidation. Though oftentimes in non-performing businesses, the value of those assets at fair market or even liquidation could be higher than in use, the highest value of those uh, revenue producing assets is based on the revenue or earnings such assets will produce. Such value is then no longer calculated by the original cost of the assets less depreciation or the fair market value of those assets, but it is calculated based on the earnings of the business and through such methodologies as discounted future earnings value to get to present value or applying a multiple of the business's earnings or other such methods and often these methods bring about a substantially higher value for those assets than if they were not producing any earnings. So the essence here is that the value of the capital assets of a business and at time also other assets such as inventory and patents or intellectual property are most often worth what they can generate in earnings. So next time you think about investing on capital assets, ask yourself the question, Will this asset pay for itself? Will it generate enough earnings that when I sell the business, that asset will have been generating enough earnings to raise the value of the business more than the cost of the asset itself? If not, the asset is no longer an investment, but a cost. In closing, a good investment into a company's asset, whatever that might be, will simply mean that when the company is sold, the price the asset of the company sells for is substantially higher than the net book value of those assets reflected on the balance sheet. So have you invested wisely on your capital assets? If not, it's never too late to make a change. Educate yourself on such matters or retain some professional advisors to help you with such decisions. A professional, knowledgeable business broker can help you identify the value of your business and how it relates to the value of the assets in your books or the original cost for that matter, or if best to sell them as part of the business, as a going concern, or as a piece of equipment in the case of a non-profitable business. Invest wisely when investing in capital assets, and be sure your investment yields an acceptable return. So join us again next week when Amanda Real explains good work.